Good morning. Um, thank you for joining us on um, this second um, series of practical webinars, looking specifically at activations. Um, we're looking today at optimization and post campaign analysis for uh, drinks brands. So hopefully you'll find something of interest out of today's session. Um, in terms of um, who's joining us today. Um, so we're joined by um, one of our strategic partners, um, Drift Rock. Um, and we've worked with them over the past couple of years, developing um, specific products for the drinks industry um, for the on-trade sector specifically. So we're going to look at some of um, the ways of working in relation to social. Um, so today's agenda is, is quite a, a packed agenda. Um, we'll sort of um, rattle through this as best we can. So if you've got any questions along the way, there is a, a question section. If you can just put your questions in there, then we can come to them at the end of uh, the session. And um, if there are too many questions, we're quite happy to answer those on a one to one basis uh, following this uh, session. So um, just to introduce myself, my name is Catherine Titherington and um, I head up the brands team uh, for Eagle Eye. Um, today's agenda, we're going to look at um, the Eagle Eye ecosystem and how that works in relation to drinks brands. Uh, we're then going to look at the pathway to purchase and how um, it's not just a question of looking at coupons and how we measure um, uh, the use of coupons, but looking at um, the measurement of intent by customers in this uh, area and also that pathway to purchase um, and redemption. So the people that actually go on, um, they've seen maybe the advert and they want then to go in and experience that. Uh, we're going to then move on to optimization, um, specifically in real time. So why optimization is different for activations in the on-trade. And we'll look at the di different digital touch points where um, there could be a disconnect and where there's an opportunity to have no dead ends when it comes to any uh, media channels. We'll look then at uh, some examples of um, social channel optimization. And then we'll look at post campaign analysis and um, just looking at some of the learnings that you can gain and some benchmarks in relation to the different drinks categories as well. And then we'll just finish with a Q&A. So I'm pleased to welcome um, Lucy and Elliot from um, Drift Rock who are joining us today. So- Thanks for having us, Catherine. Oh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, great. So I'm just going to cover the, the first part, um, which is about setting campaigns up and looking at the ecosystem. And then we're going to move on to the uh, optimization that um, Lucy and Elliot are going to pick up on. So just to give you some thoughts around um, where Eagle Eye see themselves in relation to the marketplace for on trade. And our mission really is to transform marketing for a digital world by bridging the online to the offline um, and being able to do what you can do online in the offline world. So being digitally enabled and data driven because that data is important. Um, and we're not talking big data, but practical learning data when it comes to brand activations. Okay, so I'll just move on. So just looking at the ecosystem. So we work 
um, centrally with all of these different sectors. This is a recap from the first webinar I did, but it's good to position that back again with you. Um, so within the um, grocery sector, we work with quite a number of the larger grocers, um, mainly around their uh, loyalty programme, slightly different from the on-trade sector. The on-trade sector here, section two, um, we work with quite a lot of the bigger chains and recently we've signed up quite a lot of uh, smaller ch chains as well that are actually looking at digital activation as being part of their future marketing um, strategy. So that's really quite good news. And we do have um, a, a full list of those, so we can circulate that to, to people as well, if you're looking at uh, running any brand activation campaigns. We've then got the retail sector, um, where it's, it's more about um, fashion maybe, or um, pets at home, you've got um, different programs that a lot of these uh, retailers are, are running. And the other couple of areas that we work in, and this is where Drift Rock sits, um, are our partnerships. So these are potentially different issuance channels for different um, coupons and offers, um, or they may be different platforms that we can engage with where we can do different things on behalf of the brands that we work with. And then section five, which is the area that um, the brands team sit in, is working directly with brands or with their agencies um, who are uh, developing their strategies for them. So we work um, right across that. So today we'll be looking at section two, four and five, just how they all connect as part of an ecosystem. So the Eagle Eye platform um, sort of connects into these. Uh, different areas that allows us to, to sort of move and track end to end. So looking at the activation um, side of things, um, obviously we've got different ways of connecting and issuing out coupons um, to the consumer, um, social ads, on pack promotions, out of home sampling, via surveys, in-house um, uh, facilities as well. So today we're going to look specifically at, at social. Uh, we may um, look at additional webinars on some of these other areas as well where brands have actually used um, digital activation specifically for sampling, say for example. But today we're looking at social and how a lot of brands have, have used that um, particular uh, route to market. So just to recap on um, the journey, so it doesn't matter what the, the media um, platform is you're using, but our philosophy is being able to track whatever you're doing right through to the actual redemption. Um, so that path to purchase, measuring, you know, as a, a media agency, you measure all the click-through rates, et cetera, the area that we're sort of um, responsible for, I guess, as part of a campaign is the intent, you know, where people have engaged with you as a brand and then what their intention is to then um, go into a venue and actually redeem. And those are the areas that we can um, assist with in terms of measuring that intent. Um, okay. So with regards to pathway to purchase, um, we work in two ways with brands. The first I would say is around um, test and learn. So a lot of the brands we work with initially um, are interested in seeing what learnings they can gain from a campaign um, and an activation. And we will set up an end-to-end -end campaign with either directly themselves or through their agency um, around a certain brand um, and certain channels and then from that we can actually develop a, a full end-to-end -end post campaign analysis whereby they get lots of, of learnings from that so that's one way of working once um, they've actually done that over 
a number of brands using a number of different social media channels, say for example, they may want to move to an always on solution. And that makes it more cost effective for them because basically they can run as many campaigns over a year as they want using um, the platform to be able to do that. Um, and we've, we've done quite a, a number of campaigns. None of them look the same. The creative is obviously very different. The concept behind it is different, but the basic mechanism is more or less the same. This is something uh, we've done. You can include things like weather optimization that we did with um, the Bacardi Suns Out Runs Out campaign, for example, where the social media didn't show until it hit 20 degrees. So that's one example of, of you know, um, an execution that the brand decided they wanted to measure. And that was something we were involved in. Likewise with the campaign of the year, well, um, Carlsberg won the campaign of the year last year. So we were involved in that and that was um, a little bit more complicated in, in the fact that it was a multi-merchant uh, campaign whereby the merchants involved were not just from one group um, or one chain, but were from a number of different op operators out there. So um, giving the consumer choice of where they actually wanted to redeem. And also uh, the Gordon's Gin um, social campaign that was run that was based around uh, train delays. So again, something really interesting, but from our perspective, the framework was more or less the same. So we're able then to measure um, end to end and what worked and, and what didn't. But they all sort of have essentially ingredients um, to be able to set up a, a campaign in the first instance. And those are sort of four core areas. Um, the first one is the consumer touch points. So which media channels are being used? That's quite important for us because we may already have connections with those various touch points, um, either through a direct uh, API where we can go to any media channel that the brand or agency chooses um, so that it's trackable from those individual channels. The second thing is looking at the offer, what that offer is for the consumer to engage with um, and redeem in a venue. The third point is which um, on-trade venues are you wanting to participate in the campaign? They are key because obviously they need to be able to set it up on their EPOS systems and their EPOS systems are connected to our platform where any offers or campaigns are set up. So um, those are sort of three components um, that need to be pre-agreed. And the third one is what um, GDPR and legal requirements are required as part of that campaign. So privacy policy, marketing opt-in. And usually these things are set up well in advance um, and agreed with the, the necessary partners prior to a campaign going live. But the core thing with digital is you can get all of this set up ready um, to push the button as and when required. So we're going to move on to optimization now, and this is where Elliot and Lucy are going to pick up. So let's assume that the campaign has um, been formulated, everything's been agreed, and it's up and running, and next is moving on to uh, optimization. So I'm just going to change across to Elliot. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, yeah, so I'd probably, um probably add to your, to your last point there, Catherine, in terms of that campaign setup, um, both Eagle Eye and Drift were very eager to get involved with that planning process very early on. Obviously, it's a lot of um, quite significant decisions to make, and we've been involved with many of these campaigns now. So it's definitely a case that the, the sooner we can get involved and provide you some guidance in terms of maybe what offers we think will work well, 
what kind of venues and, and things like that might be successful. Um, we're more than happy to, to get involved with those kind of discussions early on. So even if you feel like you're just at the beginning of an idea, it's um, well worth reaching out to us. Um, as Catherine said, we're going to go over optimizations that you can do in social campaigns when they are in flight and some of the aspects that we typically um, undertake when a campaign's live just to give it the best chance of delivering great results. So for this, we're going to focus on reach and redeem campaigns. So this is an approach that Eagle Eye and, um, and Driftrock developed together that's designed to use social media um, platforms such as Facebook and Instagram to deliver people coupons and vouchers for things like free drinks or percentage offers off um, and drive online offline actions. So making sure we're getting people to go into the venues and actually redeem these vouchers. And because of the tracking that we have in place, we're able to record issuances and redemption data in real time at a very granular level. And this in turn enables a lot of in-flight optimizations throughout the campaign that can just help um, get the most possible out of it, the best return for your budget. So to give you a top line view of how this process works, so primarily we run as Driftrock the, the activity across Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, many different different social platforms and either through native forms on those platforms or directing to a website with a form on. We collect customer data so they enter their name, email address, postcode and, and things like that. That data in turn comes to Driftrock and we process all of this to be able to do detailed reporting with that information, so looking at which channels may be formed better than others, um, where we're seeing lowest cost per issuance and lowest cost per redemption. Um, and this data in turn gets sent to Eagle Eye, who handle all the actual issuance of the, the voucher and the coupon itself, as well as tracking the redemptions of those vouchers. So the act of someone physically going to a venue, asking for a drink and, and using the voucher from their phone. This data is then in turn passed back into Driftrock and again that supercharges more of our reporting because once we can see the data coming in from the social platforms as well as where redemptions are happening, we can build a really good kind of full customer view of um, what elements of the campaign are working well. And you can also pass that data from Driftrock back into the ad platforms themselves. So for example, if you wanted to build a lookalike audience of people that have perhaps redeemed, you can find people that are similar because they're going to be more likely to, to want to make use of your vouchers. So it's not a case of you just collect your data and do nothing with it. There's lots of ways you can use it to actively improve performance of your campaigns. Yeah, and it's worth um, noting as well that um, all the customer data flowing through the Driftbot platform um, to Eagle Eye and uh, back to uh, the social channels um, is all flowing through in real time um, and it is uh, GDPR compliant, uh, data compliant. Um, none of your agency teams uh, need to have a look at um, customer data. It's all uh, sent through um, hashed uh, and securely as well. Yes, the, the GDPR and all the data bits are definitely a thing to, to pick up early if you ever think of planning one of these campaigns, just because that can sometimes um, be a, a little bit of a challenge. Um, in these campaigns, there's a multitude of factors that can dictate success. So at the fundamental level of the campaign, you've got things like which partner merchants are using, the offer that you've got in place and the T's and C's of that offer. So when does it need to be redeemed? Are there any strict rules about how it needs to be redeemed but also elements such as the customer journey creative and geotargeting and when a campaign is live and up and running you've got to be thinking about the major levers that you can pull to actively improve performance so in the case of a reach and redeem campaign it would be the customer journey the creative and the geotargeting so once that campaign offer is up and running these are the things that you can make the most sizable difference um, to your campaign performance with so if, if we consider um, the customer journey, first of all, I think it's important to emphasize that just because someone has perhaps received a voucher, you shouldn't necessarily stop talking to them at that point. So whilst in many cases, um, lots of people will get a voucher and go and redeem it as quickly as they can, some people perhaps need a little bit more of a nudge or reminder. And what we always recommend across our clients is to, um, set live this um, retargeting activity to be able to remind people, look, 
don't forget you've got this voucher here's where you can use it here's the deadline um, by which you need to use it um, and just act as a bit of encouragement to get them to to go to the venue and actually make use of it so it's important just to run this activity because we have seen it increase redemption rate for vouchers by up to 35 percent um, so that little reminder message does help and it's nice to be able to offer people a, a bespoke message that um, that's really tailored to your promotion. When it comes to looking at creative, we also recommend using a wide range of assets where you can. So if we take Facebook and Instagram as an example, we would typically recommend using formats such as carousel, single image and story and running these in rotation with one, with one another. Um, this is primarily because firstly, you'll increase reach by being able to appear in more ad placements across those platforms. But also, it gives you a wider range of choices to make when it comes to optimization throughout the campaign. So you will, depending on the offer, see performance differences between each ad format with some last perform better than others. So being able to make a quick change midway through the campaign where you perhaps pause a format, maybe you want to introduce another one, maybe you want to slightly change a piece of wording, the more options you give yourself, the, the more likely you are to be able to improve things and rather than just being stuck with one format you're giving yourself a lot of room to, to, to improve performance here. What we've also found kind of as Catherine mentioned earlier is that making your ads more contextually relevant to, uh, to people can improve engagement and boost engagement so in this case for example having your promotion and the ads tied to a particular um, weather trigger which we can run um, through the Driftrock platform let's um you just kind of show that your ad is a bit more relatable to people and we have seen this this improved engagement rate with ads by up to 41 percent so just by making a slight change that makes your offer um more relevant to people can have a big impact in, on performance it's probably lucy just worth you mentioning maybe a couple of a couple of ways in which you can do the do the web, weather targeting through the drift rock platform yeah so um through the drift rock platform we can uh, apply um a couple of different uh, weather conditions uh, so it can be for example when it's uh, sunny outside and um, during the summer months and um, snow rain and we've got a whole um, plethora of conditions that we uh, get to pull from several different weather APIs one being um, the uh, net weather so um, we use those to switch the ads on and off um, making it uh, extremely relevant for the um, customer so they can look outside and see that it's sunny, go on Facebook and uh, see the ad uh, that's completely relevant uh, to that weather condition. Yeah, great. Thanks, Luce. Um, and then once you've accrued a large data set of issuance and redemption data, getting into geoanalysis can really help you identify where to focus future spend. So this is an example of dashboard that we have within Driftrock that is kind of a result of data that we get from the lead capture itself on platforms such as Facebook and Instagram, but also the great data that we get back from Eagle Eye in terms of those redemption figures. So if you picture a nationwide campaign, it's great to be able to look at that at a very granular level and with heat maps and markers see, okay, where am I actually seeing the most issuances? And what areas do I maybe need to focus my investment throughout the rest of the campaign? And having this level of data can really help in terms of answering those important questions of you know, which regions are driving the lowest cost per voucher issuance, where are you seeing the highest redemption rate across the country, because you'll normally see a bit of a difference between those two things. And then moving forward, what's the best way to adjust your geotargeting to make use of this data? So as an example, when we run these Reach Redeem campaigns with Eagle Eye, we always have a degree of kind of geographic granularity to our campaign structures across the ad platforms. So whether that be region of the UK, a county level, or even down to postcode level, because if you have that granularity, it makes it a lot easier to um, make adjustments as the campaign progresses to try and improve performance. What we also recommend do, doing is carrying these optimizations through into a long-term always on strategy. So. As an example, you may have that first campaign where all you're really trying to do is test and learn. You've got initial assumptions about what offer, creative, 
um, geographic approach may work, as well as some first party data that you may want to utilize to try and drive these voucher issuances and, and redemptions. But if you carry on the insights that you get from each one, eventually you'll find performance improves over time. So by the second campaign and third campaign, you've learned all these things about which regions of the UK seem to work best for you, what creative and ad formats seem to work best, and progressively you see this improvement of your cost for issuance will start to come down, your redemption rate will continue to get better, and you'll kind of master that approach of here's, here's an offer, I know exactly how I need to get that to this target audience, and I have a very clear view of the return that I'm going to get from this. So we always encourage clients to consider this as a long-term strategy, not just a one-off burst, because we know those voucher issuances and those campaigns can be great for driving footfall over the long term. We're then going to touch upon um, post-campaign analysis. So with all our clients, at the end of a campaign, we'll go through a detailed PCA process to help clients understand what may have worked and what could be improved next time round. And when going through this process, it's always important to look at the campaign at a very detailed level. So, for example, considering channels and understanding um, through the data that we have um, in Driftrock from, from Eagle Eye and the platforms, um, which media channels perhaps perform best, where do you see the best engagement, where was the best redemption rate, maybe those channels that you want to drop next time round or new ones that you want to introduce. Likewise, with creative, looking at ad formats and which message maybe drove the best engagement. If you didn't do something contextual in terms of weather or similar things, maybe you want to try that next time round. When it comes to coupon issuance, um, looking at which audiences drove the best performance. So maybe audiences powered by your first party data perform better than Facebook's own interest audiences. Looking at the offer itself, so did that seem to resonate with people? Did they seem to, to like whatever saving or promotion you were offering them and did it, did it deliver the desired business result? And that kind of aligns similarly with the redemption. How could, how could that be improved? Maybe there's adjustments you want to make to the customer journey. For example, if you use native lead forms in this campaign on, type, on the likes of Facebook, maybe you want to try a website form next time around. They can see performance differences, so it's important to consider that customer journey. And then lastly, looking at venues. So if you're using a nationwide campaign, which venues may be performed better than others? For future campaigns, maybe you want to focus on areas where you seem to struggle in terms of redemption to try and drive growth, or you want to kind of double down on ones which worked well and really push for that, push for that loyalty. Yeah, and also if I can pick up on that, Elliot, as well, um, we can also look at issuance to redemption timeframes. So if we know, for example, um, uh, you've targeted a customer with a, a beer offer, um, usually males seem to respond a lot quicker, whereas females with a, say, cocktail offer may want to organise things with friends over a couple of days. So measurement of, of that gives you um, also information that can be fed back for future campaigns when you're actually setting up your redemption windows, giving people time to, to come back in and redeem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at this point, you also want to look deep into the data that you've accrued across the campaign. So, for example, looking at things like time of day trends and day of week. So, are there particular days on the week where you seem to get a lot of issuances but not a lot of redemptions? Maybe if it's a drinks campaign, you want to try and focus spend on Thursday and Friday because you know people are more likely to go out on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. There's a lot of trends there that can be useful for if you're looking at future campaigns, how do you adjust your flighting of the budget to, to better improve that redemption rate? Also considering things like audience sentiment and post comments. So on Facebook and Instagram in particular, people are always more than willing to, to let you know what they think of an offer or their experience. And you can see whether they perhaps liked the offer and found it easy to use. Maybe there were issues in some venues where people struggle to redeem for, for whatever reason. It's always important to check in on these comments on a regular basis just to get an idea on what the, how people think um, about your offer and whether they're enjoying it. And then lastly, um, once you've got that full data set of geographic data, similar to Catherine's point with the kind of lead time to people potentially redeeming, once you've got all that data in, look at, okay, where worked, where didn't work, and where do we want to target next time round? Because um, that can make a very big difference to, to your return from the campaigns. 
And we're very big believers that no campaign is unsuccessful. And as long as you come at it with the approach of, right, we're going to do this test and learn approach. We're going to carry this through into an always on strategy where there's always something that you'll be able to learn. There's always an insight that you can take from the campaign that will inform you on how to improve future offers. And we've done many of these with lots of different categories as well as merchant types and got some ideas on benchmark issuance to redemption rates across these businesses to give you an idea on what kind of return you expect. But we always go through a very detailed forecasting process with our clients before launching these campaigns just to give you an idea on um, what we think performance will look like and, and make sure we're all agreed on the success metrics. Um, and we're now going to go on to some questions that um, have come up through the course of the webinar. Catherine, do you want to take the first one? Yeah, so, well, firstly, a quick one. Chris asked, um, will we be sending the slides afterwards? And yes, we will. So anybody um, who's not attended will also get a copy of the, the slides as well. Um, ben asked around the issuance to redemption rates on some of the case studies we've shared. Um, generally, the um, activations are sold in bundles of um, 10,000. That gives you up to 10,000 issuances. So the redemption rates are against the caps that are set by um, individual brands. So they know roughly in their budget how many redemptions they want to take place. And we'll build that into the campaign, basically. So the redemption rates... Uh, shown the issuance to redemption rates are against their personal numbers that have been set on the campaign. Um, just uh, a couple of other questions. Um, some, uh, Thomas said, if we were wanting to run a campaign using um, Reach and Redeem, what's the first thing we would need to do? Um, I think from my perspective, it's agreeing which um, merchants um, are going to participate and basically get um, approval from those merchants. That's not something that we can do. It is the merchant that would need to agree that they wanted to participate in the campaign. Um, so I would say that is the first thing. Obviously, it's agreeing what the campaign is and being able to uh, show them what what you're wanting to do but basically I would say that's the, the first thing. Um, there's a second one from Sarah, um, maybe for you Elliot. Um, as you know reach is important for brands, as you are GL targeting around venues, does this reduce the reach substantially or do you find it increases issuances and follow through to redemptions um, more than a, a standard social campaign? I, yeah, that's interesting. I think um, what I'd emphasize for these Reach Redeem campaigns is that um, we're always looking for the, the right kind of reach. You know, we want to reach the audience that we think are, are most likely um, going to actually make use of the voucher and actually go and go to the venue and, and, and actually use it. So whilst with a more geo-targeted approach, and you know, we've done it in the past for um just a couple of venues before and taken more of the postcode approach um whilst that can reduce reach it does improve the quality of the reach and particularly when it comes to things like the always on strategy the more you can use your own data to fuel audiences the, the better that redemption rate is going to be so it's not necessarily just about um getting you're not trying to get ads in front of anyone you're trying to get it in front of the right people that are actually going to make use of it Okay, brilliant. And Chelsea's asking, is this process available for the off trade? Um, thanks for that, Chelsea. It is something we would love to do immediately, but unfortunately, um, it takes a lot longer for um, the bigger grocers to implement something like this. So we've been in discussions with a number of the bigger retailers um, about this process, but um, at the moment, they're concentrating on their own loyalty initiatives, which are actually very big programs. So we're working with them on those currently, but we're moving forward quite quickly with them into looking at um, digital brand promotions for the future. So um, let's keep in touch over that. And I'm sure we can sort of advise you when the first retailers uh, come on board to actually look at 
promotions in the same way as the on trade. So hopefully that answers your, your question. Um, I think that's most of the, um, the questions answered there, unless um, anybody's got any other queries. Um, our email is on the bottom here. So if you've got any uh, specific questions in relation to your own brand or your own activities, then please don't hesitate to send an email. Um, and then we'll circulate this um, anyway after the session. So thank you very much and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone.